latent variables or latent constructs sometimes we refer to them we refer to them as constructs sometimes we refer to them as latent variables or some people name it latent constructs so all are the same all are referring to the same thing uh, so this means the variables that we cannot measure them directly for example satisfaction uh, quality of life um, attitude intention to use uh, body image so um, there is no instrument we connect to the body of someone and to brain of someone and read the measure um, so for these measurements in social sciences for these type of uh, variables uh, we usually develop some um, items or we develop some uh, questions or we develop some measures so all are referring to the same they're just synonyms right so for example for life satisfaction you may use an instrument that has five questions so each question is called an item or a measure or an observed variable right so, right for example for life satisfaction there are five let's say five questions and we ask respondents to um, indicate let's say to answer on a Likert of a Likert scale of one to five from strongly disagree to strongly agree for the five questions and then we say okay these uh, five are measuring these five questions are measuring life satisfaction of the participants but uh, why do we need several items why we don't use only one question to measure a latent variable or latent construct the reason is because none of these items are perfect each of them has um, some measurement error right um, people may have different interpretation and they may uh, you know understand the questions a bit different from others so we develop we state we use several items to reduce the measurement error in other words we want to increase the reliability um, of the construct so I talked about I mentioned about reliability so reliability and validity are the two important aspects of measurement we need to assess the reliability and validity of the measures so how to assess them um, using an example the classic example of reliability and validity I want to tell you what we mean by reliability and validity um, how can we how can we measure the room temperature this room temperature can we use a bathroom scale to measure the room temperature of course not so bathroom scale is not a valid instrument to measure room temperature this is about validity means the right instrument to measure something so you need to make sure the items that you are using the instrument they are using will measure what you're supposed to measure this is validity for validity we have different types we have face validity content validity discriminant validity uh, uh, convergent validity nomological validity. There, there is a long list of validity you can google to know more about them uh, but mainly in um, SEM reports, SEM analysis, we assess the uh, construct validity and we usually for construct validity, we assess convergent and discriminant validity. Anyway, so validity means that we need to measure, we need to use the right instrument to measure something. Uh, okay, now what is reliability? So what, how to measure the room temperature? Thermometer right you can use a thermometer and read it and then maybe you can report the room temperature is 30 degree of celsius now what if i use another thermometer so now i have two thermometers in this room the second thermometer may show 30.5 or may show 29.5 or maybe 30 there's no guarantee the second thermometer even the same brand show exactly the room temperature is let's say 30 right 30 degree of celsius so what about if we have three four so 10 all these 10 um, thermometers may show different room temperature right for example they may vary between 29 to 31 some of them 30 some 29 point um, seven some maybe 29.5 some 30.2 um, so there is, I don't think all of them will exactly show that the room temperature is 30 degree of Celsius <laughs> so what you can do is if your boss asks you to report the room temperature 
instead of relying on one of the measures, instead of relying on one of the thermometers, you can, let's say, compute the average of all these measures and then report the room temperature is 30.05. This is more reliable than reporting only one of the thermometers. So this is about reliability. By increasing more, by increasing number of thermometers in your measurement, you are reducing the measurement error. Each of the thermometers had some measurement errors, right? So by increasing number of thermometers, we are reducing the measurement error and we are increasing the reliability. So the thermometers in my example are actually this, uh, the questions in your, in, in your questionnaire, the questions you use to measure a latent variable. For example, for life satisfaction, you may use five questions, means you are using five thermometers. So each may have some measurement errors. So by increasing number of items, we are reducing the measurement error and we are increasing the reliability. Um, so, yep. Most concepts we wish to examine require multiple measures or multiple items. Uh, because most concepts are uh, complex, like consumer confidence, attitude, satisfaction, quality of life, and they may have different meanings and or dimensions. So individuals may interpret them, um, each of these questions, in different way. So to reduce the, uh, these uh, variation, these measurement error, we use several items. So as more of, a cons more of a construct is explained, the amount of error decreases. In this way, high reliability is related with lower measurement error. I copied this from Hare's textbook, Multivariate Data Analysis textbook, page 635. Now, how many items do we need per construct? So based on my argument, we need more items. Yes, more items means for each construct, more items means more questions means more reliability. And you may improve the, you may increase the generalizability of your findings as well. However, more items means you need more larger sample size to test your model. And this is sometimes a big challenge. Uh, so there are some rule of thumb for sample size. Some people say, okay, if, uh, you need between five to 20 samples per items, per questions in your questionnaire, uh, I mean, in the model um, as a sample size. But there are some arguments, some actually uh, um, say this is not a good method for um, computing the sample size and we need to use power analysis. So there are some arguments I can provide some uh, references to you to read more about it but um, based on my personal experience at the end you need three or four items per construct uh, when you want to develop your model but um, usually in CFA um, some items um, are deleted so in this case it's good to use an instrument with more than three or four items per construct and then when in CFA you uh, have to delete some of them at the end in the finalized model um, you have at least three or four items for each construct so my advice to you is use those instruments those um, measurements that already have in many studies have shown that they have good reliability and validity and uh, make sure that at the end, you, your final model, you have at least three or four items for each construct.